Logging is an important part of any application. As long as everything runs smoothly, you don't need it. But when you face any issue with your application, you better have logs that help you find the problem. In this video, we will learn about Serilog and integrate it into an ASP.NET Core Web API application running on .NET 6. Hi, and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. On this channel, you learn all about .NET development. Let's take a look at Serilog. Serilog is a .NET library that provides diagnostic logging to files, the console, and almost everywhere you would like. Serilog can be used in classic .NET framework applications and for applications running on the latest and greatest .NET 6. One of the biggest strengths of Serilog is that it has been built with structured logging in mind. You can find more information on Serilog's website linked in the video description. Now that we know more about Serilog, let me tell you my personal experience with it. I used Serilog in a few applications with different logging requirements and I was always satisfied with my results. I cannot speak much about performance because I don't work with large distributed, ultra-scalable applications, but the performance was never an issue in my use cases. I like Serilog's simple integration into .NET applications, the ease of use, how simple you can start and what more advanced features are available and can be used later in your journey. Let's create an application and integrate Serilog. In Visual Studio 2022, we create a new project based on the ASP.NET Core Web API project template. We choose Serilog Demo as the project name and on the next dialog page, we stick with the defaults and use .NET 6. We click on Create and wait until Visual Studio generated the project for us. Installing Serilog is simple. First, we open the NuGet Package Manager and search for the Serilog.ASP.NET Core package and install the latest stable version. After a few seconds, Serilog is installed. Next, let's integrate Serilog into our application by registering it as a logging provider. I insert the code snippet that defines a new logger configuration. We configure the configuration to read the application configuration from the application builder. We also enrich Serilog with the log context. Next, we clear all existing logging providers. The web application builder adds, for example, the console logging provider, and we want to get rid of that. Last but not least, we add Serilog to the logging providers for our application and provide the configured logger configuration object as its sole argument. We configured the logger to use the settings from the application configuration. Let's open the appsettings.json file and configure Serilog. I insert the sample configuration. Let's take a look at it. First, there is the using property where we define an array of log targets. In Serilog, log targets are called sinks. We configure an array with a single sync, the serilog.sinks.filesync. Next, we can configure log levels and more importantly, the write to section. In the write to section, we configure information for the file sync. The name property with the value file defines that the property provided in the args property will be used for the file sync. We configure the path where our log file should be written. The rolling interval property defines when a new file should be created. And the output template defines the structure of the log output for each log statement. Now that Serilog is configured, we open the weather forecast controller class and insert a log statement in the get method. Now let's start the application. We use Swagger to send a simple GET request to the weather forecast controller. Open the entry in the endpoints list and click on the try out button. We click the big blue execute button to send a request. We receive an array with weather data. However, let's close the application and look at the log files. We open the project directory and open the logs folder. The file name contains the prefix we configured in the appsettings.json file and the part after the dash is the current day. 
With the current configuration, Serilog creates a separate file for every day. We collect all the log statements for any given day in its file. Let's open the file and scroll through it. We can see a timestamp and our log statement that we added to the weather forecast controller class. Now that we learned about the basics of Serilog and integrated it into our application, let's look at the provided syncs. As we can see, there are syncs for popular cloud providers including Amazon CloudWatch, Azure Analytics and many other cloud services. There are also syncs for the Windows Event Log, Microsoft Teams and other interesting log targets. You can find the link to the provided syncs in the video description. You can enrich Serilog with additional information such as a session ID or a web request ID. You can configure the output format with placeholders and configure JSON instead of plain text output. You can explore all the additional opportunities Serilog provides in the wiki on the GitHub project site linked in the video description. If you have any questions or want me to cover additional Serilog features in a future video, leave your comment below. Thanks for watching, remember to subscribe to not miss out on future.net content and watch this video next.